Hello and welcome. My name is Miss Barbara with the Greensboro Public Library and today we're going to make one of my favorite recipes for Day of the Dead. We're going to make pan de muerto or bread of the dead. It's very traditional to have during these festivals. Uh, it's an uh, item you see on many ofrendas. The one we're going to do today is fairly traditional. The only difference is instead of making a really big bread, we're going to make little small breads. But you can shape it into what size you'd like. Just adjust the cook times. So I've put out the title card of what we need. Let's get started. We're going to put our four eggs at room temperature into the mixer. We're going to put half the sugar. So that'd be a quarter cup. salt and half the butter. It's about a third of a cup. my mixer with a dough hook. If you don't have a mixer, then you can do this part by hand either with a beater or a whisk. level cups. gently for about a minute. the other half 
much, so another third of a cup. in our yeast, two tablespoons. This next step, we're going to mix in the warm milk. You can also use warm water if you don't have milk. It'll change the texture of the dough a bit, but mostly it's to add moisture and the warmth helps the yeast to activate. You want milk that's just warm to the touch. If it's too cold, it won't activate the yeast. If it's too hot, it will kill the yeast. So let's add that in. And so that's a quarter of a cup. And I just simply microwaved it for about 10, 15 seconds. to mix in my orange zest. So this is the zest of two large oranges and I also mixed about two tablespoons of sugar in it. The sugar kind of binds to the orange zest and pulls a lot of the oils out and it will also make it easier to distribute the orange zest and the oils throughout the bread and it will make the orange come out more flavorful. down the sides of my bowl to make sure that there's no pockets of flour and other ingredients. On the sides or bottom. It already has an amazing smell from the orange zest. So I'm going to let this knead one to two minutes on my dough hook until it forms a solid ball, but it's still fairly wet. So we're going to take our dough and turn it out onto a clean flat surface. I've got a cutting board and I've just put around a tablespoon of flour on it. We're going to use the flour to kind of knead into the dough to help make it smooth, but you don't want to use a lot because you'll change the texture of your bread by adding too much flour in. It's just there to help us make it less sticky so we can knead it.
to press my dough out and stretch it a bit and then start folding it in on itself to incorporate the flour. helps the gluten get started working which makes the texture of our bread Judging by the texture, that's plenty of flour, so I won't add any more. What I'm going to do now is knead it for about two minutes. So our dough is kneaded and ready. We got a nice soft ball. All the ingredients are incorporated, and we've worked the gluten in. We're going to put it in bowl that's at least double its size if not triple. We grease the bowl. You can use a little bit of oil but I saved my butter packets and rubbed them with the outside of the wrapper. I'm going to put this in here and use the rest of the butter on my wrapper grease the top of the bread dough. Then cover it very loosely with some plastic wrap. You want it to be able to rise but also to trap some of the heat in. And set it in a warm place until it doubles in size, which can take anywhere from half an hour if it's really hot in the summer or you've been cooking in the kitchen to two hours. If your house is a little cool, then you can turn the stove on to around 400 or 450, set a clean kitchen towel underneath the bowl folded up and let it sit on your warm stove top and that'll help it rise more quickly. So I'll see you back here when it's uh, risen and doubled in size and we'll shape it and let it rise again and it'll be time to bake it. Welcome back. So our dough has risen double in size and it's time to shape our bread. You're going to need to section out the dough so that part of it becomes the round breads, and part of it becomes the traditional topping of the cross pieces and little ball. So I'm going to cut, separate our dough in half, and section out pieces about the size of a golf ball. Just roll them between your clean palms and one side towards the middle until the top is smooth and round. And we're going to do that till we run out of half of our dough. We're probably going to use part of the other half, but this will give us a start on making the little bread rolls. You're going to want to form the traditional 
heart shape. So roll two pieces into little logs and then using three fingers make little indentions into it. And this is supposed to look like bones. across the top of each bread along with a piece that looks like a little ball. And you're going to do that for each of the little breads. So once you have all of your bread shaped, then cover them with plastic wrap loosely and put them back in your warm spot until they've doubled in size again. If your spot's very warm, half an hour to an hour, you can do the same trick where you turn the oven on and put a towel down and let them rise on the warm oven. After they've doubled in size, go ahead and bake them at 350 for around 15 minutes, but be sure to check them a little early because every oven cooks a bit differently.